This time on the show, Encrypt All the Things. We're continuing our discussion on open PGP and key servers, then connecting social media and chat through IRC. All that and more this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. Hello, welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I am Shannon Morse. And this is where we continue our mission to seek out strange new open PGP keys. <laughs> yes, it is. Or something is like that. Is that what we talked about last week? That is what we remember. talked about. Do not. It was a really good segment. And you have not oh, yet yeah. sent me any secure mail. So come oh, on, get on that. Oh, sorry about that. You know, I've been using my mail so often for like work-related stuff that I just don't take the time to do it. Mm -hmm. I just always just close the... Mailing. Yeah. Well, that, the that's mailing the thing about thing. like, um, you know, the, we've had PGP for the last 20 years and yeah. it hasn't seen like widespread adoption. And I hope that in our lifetime that changes it. And like, like we fought the whole crypto war and won and then nobody's using it. <laughs> nobody's and it's all using like, it. Please. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a perfect standing example of that. I have the ability now. I know how to do it and I haven't really well, had you know a what? reason to do it. <laughs> we're going to make it easier today because we're going to talk easier? about. Easier? Yeah, we're going to talk. It's already easy. Well, we're going to, well, you know what the most difficult part is, is once you've got it all set up is, hmm, now I want to send a secure message over to Hibby on ah, IRC. Yeah. Except I don't have his public key. What's oh, his public key? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hibby, what's your email address? Send yeah. me your public key. Yeah, the same thing. Here's and my then I'll send you the other thing. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Pain. let's. So let's fix that problem. Uh, of course, last week talking about um, you know the quick start guide basically, and I hope that you guys send that to your friends and, and say, look, you should be using this too. Just follow this; it's really easy. And uh, today, I'd like to address some of the usability concerns. I mean, the beauty of all of this is that the security is in the message and not the transport. So you can go ahead and assume a man in the middle attack. It doesn't even matter if somebody sees the email that I'm sending to you using yeah. PG. No big deal because. Mine's secured with my private key. Yours is secured with your private key. As long as we keep those safe, right? We're all They'll good. They'll just see a bunch of gibberish. Yeah. So if like you know, Alice wants to send a message to Bob and she keeps her key secure, then it's totally cool. And and um, but the idea then is that if Alice wants to receive um, encrypted email, mm -hmm. then somebody needs Alice's public key. Yeah, of okay. course. Uh, now, as far as web apps and services, they are dominating the internet now. OpenPGP has provided a very adequate way to maintain ownership of content. Mailvelope, the Chrome extension, uh, you know, achieves this with as little headache as possible while integrating with popular webmail clients through using OpenPGP.js. It's a JavaScript library um, written for HTML5 compliant devices, and basically, it's one of many implementations of OpenPGP. PGP. It's a really good example. The, you know, there's others like GNU uh, Privacy Guard or GNU PG mm -hmm. or GPG. Uh, but basically, they all do the same thing. They all implement OpenPGP. It's an RFC 4880 something standard in the Internet Engineering Task Force. But <laughs> the idea here is it doesn't matter if you're using Mailvelope on Chrome and I'm using Thunderbird with Enigmail and GPG. We're all speaking the same language, and that's the beauty I find in email and OpenPGP. No one owns it. You know, it's open source. Yeah. It's free. Anyone can get an email account. Anybody can use this basically military grade crypto and you know it's a massive departure from the likes of facebook and twitter yeah. who own your content and they run a closed system and they don't do anything about securing no they'll secure your password of course. with one way hash or something but they won't do anything to secure your content because you know they can monetize that so keep that in plain text and you know with things like cispa hopefully not passing but if so um you know, and uh, it just and CISPA enabling companies like Facebook and Google and right. who are who are behind it. I can't believe this Google is behind this. Yeah, that's kind of but surprising, but it, I guess it's go figure. Yeah, right? and there's no repercussions whatsoever. I mean, they were opposed to like SOPA mm -hmm. because there was a financial incentive. There was like money behind it, money talks. Right. When suddenly, you know, they're on the hook or they have to spend the money to do this. And suddenly with uh, CISPA, the way that it's set up is that they're protected, they're anonymized, they can share everything they want with the government and they don't have to think about mm -hmm. spending any resources to clean any of the content. Any yeah. Yep. So 
Anyway, with within light of that, I think that it's uh, it would be really cool to get everybody on the same page. Uh, we can all agree that PGP is great, mm -hmm. but for it to be used widely, it needs to be easier to use. And Mailvelop and other things using OpenPGP.js have done have gone through great lengths to make it easier. And still, I think there's a lot more work in that field, and um, it's one of the things that I've been really thinking about lately. That's so good. I figured we'd talk about key servers. Uh, they're basically a way to distribute cryptographic keys. You know, typically public keys used in asymmetric cryptography like OpenPGP, which we've been using. Um, and one of the oldest key servers, in fact, is hosted by MIT. And the premise here is really simple. You submit your ASCII armored public key, mm -hmm. and that is to say, basically ASCII armored just is a fancy techno babble word for binary converted to ASCII because the body of an email message was never made really for binary. Uh, okay. So, you know, it's why when you do your, your public key or, or your ciphertext of when you've actually made your uh, That's why it comes crypto out message, a bunch of yeah, it just looks like a bunch of gobbledygook, but it's ASCII letters and stuff. And it's not mm -hmm. just a bunch of weird characters that yeah. would make your old IBM XT beep. But uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, it's, a, it's a great way to just go ahead and register your public key in the database. So now if I want to send a message to you, I can get your public key without having to first go through the, hey, here's my public key, what's your public key, and then waiting around and all of that stuff. Okay. So let's check it out here. This is the, uh, it's over at pgp.mit.edu is, is one of them. Uh, and uh, another popular one is also the PGP global directory at keyserver.pgp.com. And I believe these sync, and the idea here, let's see if it's synced yet. I put mine in the MIT database. If I search my name now, and I tell it I'm a human. Learning. That was an easy one. What? Come on. Dessert. I totally got that. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I'm not in their database yet, but I am in the MIT database and I believe they sync, but if I search Darren Kitchen, I'm going to find based on name, there it is, darrenhack5.org, and there's my key. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And, and all there is to ah. submitting it is you go to Mailvelope and you choose your key, export, mm -hmm. display your public key, copy it to the clipboard, come over here, paste it in, Bob's your uncle. Oh, that's super easy. Uh, you click submit this submit key, key, and then so if you do that now, and I search Shannon Morse. Okay, let me do that. Mail mm -hmm. envelope options, and then I go to my key export display public key. Copy to clipboard. I don't know why I copied it, uh, and then submit. And then just hit submit to the there key you server. Go. That's all there is to it. Added to this, how, but how do they know that's <laughs> Look me? at this. I just did the search for Shannon Morse, and now yeah. I see Shannon Morse, nubsy at gmail.com right there. What? And that's there's so your key. weird. And oh, so, cool. You know, like last week, we uh, you know threw up the, uh, and, and this is actually another fun way when we were talking about, uh, the, the beauty of this is you can give your public key to anyone. It doesn't but degrade do the security of your how private key. How do they know key. that it, oh, I guess it's just tied to the email address. No, it's in the key. Oh, so it's in the key. It's, yeah, so that big block of text that you pasted in there, yeah. it contains your name and your oh, email address and your then the, okay. the public key, basically, obviously. Okay. Um, and so all you have to do is paste in that block, and wow. now you're in the database. So if anybody That's wants awesome. to email you, they can search that. Yeah. And, um, and then if you want to reply back to them and they're in the database, you just search their email, and Bob's your uncle. Um, this is That's cool. This is really fun. Then another thing, like what we did last week, was to do like QR codes to kind of submit to. I think we're hosting it at hack5.org/key/darren or slash key slash Shannon, oh, okay. uh, because the idea is get your key out there. There's there's no way that um, that anybody can just using your public key impersonate you or yeah. figure out your private key. That's yeah. the beauty of it. So put it out there as, as much as possible. Um, I know that I've done stuff in the past with uh, with QR codes, those are fun, mm -hmm. or a data matrix, um, very similar. Uh, there's a good example over at um, invx.com <clears throat> is a place where you can create both of those. And uh, you may find that, for example, your public key, if you're using a large public key, like I, I'm using a 4096-bit public key, it's not going to create a data matrix. It's it's too big. 
Oh, I see. My key's too wow. big. But if you're using a weaker 1024 bit, you could create mm -hmm. a uh, data matrix or QR code of it. But rather than that, I can simply take the URL over here at pgp.mit.edu on port 11371. And you can see here my unique, you know, this is the, my unique identifier mm -hmm. that ties back in over here. You see E1278, and that's yeah. the same thing over here. That's my like key fingerprint. So I can just copy that, pop that in here, ah, and it generates a barcode. That's cool. And there you go. If you scan that barcode with your phone, you're going to yeah. you know, get the URL. It's going to take you to your key. You can import it. That's cool. And I, I hope that helps usability. Some of the other things that are on my mind as far as increasing usability um, is to do a follow-up segment with uh, bringing, your, um, bringing OpenPGP over to Android. There are ways to do it. It's... I'm going to try to make it as concise as possible. <laughs> it's not like the webmail equivalent. And that okay. is a point of contention where mm -hmm. if you send me, you know, a message and then I'm on my phone and I'm like, oh, great, uh, gobbledygook, and yeah, I can't yeah. read it. So, uh, but I feel like all of these are just technical hurdles that should be able to be overcome. Yeah. It's been 20 years now. It's like, come on, let's get this thing God, mainstream adopted. Years. I yeah. can't believe it's been so long. I know. You That's were terrible. three wow. or something. Yeah, yeah, I was like seven. Okay. <laughs> Well, with all that, I want to hear what you guys are using as far as uh, you know your OpenPGP implementations, if you like Eudora uh, or Thunderbird or some of the other ones out there, Pegasus, whatever, whatever have There's you. One called Pegasus. Uh, yeah, there is. You might like that one. <gasps> Rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> yeah, you could use it with trumpet windsock even. I just went there. <laughs> and with all of that, we're going to take a quick break. But when we get back, you're getting into IRC. Yes, it's I am. IRC. It's the IRC. All right, I'm I'm super excited about this because I grew up on IRC. Oh, so, you're gonna like this. Well, then. I never grew up, but like I. That's where <laughs> my, you live. Yeah, you're you're gonna like this one. Yeah, then. the international sovereignty that is IRC. All right, let's take a quick break. I am really thankful to have served as a systems administrator for 10 years back in Virginia and I learned so much on the job. You guys know it's a constant challenge but it's also an awesome learning experience. Those issues pop up all the time. It's always something different. Always keeping you on your toes. Challenging, yes. Stressful, yes. Rewarding, totally. And one of the things that I am for sure glad is that I had GoToAssist by Citrix in my tool belt. This remote support tool has been growing for years and the latest version is so great. Get this. Go to assist monitoring. It helps you quickly identify potential issues before they become that massive headache. And with a customizable dashboard displaying all of your network performance and servers, uh, your desktops, you'll be able to be proactive, set up alerts, so you're the first one to know about the thing that went down and not you know, your boss calling you because that's not the way you want to find out. Um, and as far as management is concerned, they are the best when it comes to remote support. It lets you provide unattended support to any Mac or PC or even a mobile device from anywhere. And it's all tied in with their awesome GoToAssist service desk that lets you keep track of all of those support issues all in one simple cloud-based tool. And so you can sign up for a special 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToAssist.com, click on Try It Free, and then use the promo code HAK5. That's GoToAssist.com, promo code HAK5. 